Here we go. Okay, so this is our ICD-10. Again, yours may say 2021. There may be a couple of differences. I'm gonna try not to give out any page numbers because page numbers are obviously different in manuals. I made that mistake before, not thinking. But what I wanna show you is um, where everything is. So you guys see, you know, I am the tab queen, right? Because I, everything that I own is tabbed. My textbook, my paper textbooks are tabbed. I just tab because that's how it works for me. So. When you open up your ICD-10, all of your guidelines are in the actual front of the book. Okay, could y'all do me a favor and mute yourselves because the background noise is, is big. Even though it may not be uh, loud for y'all, it's loud on this end. So just mute yourselves. And if you have a question or ask you something, you can unmute yourself and do, and do that. That's better. Okay, so. When you start opening up your ICD-10, you're gonna see your guidelines. Let me remind you, where are the guidelines in our CPT? Right before each one of our sections, right? So when we get into our CPT and we, I talk about guidelines for evaluation and management, that's not all in the front. That's gonna be found at the beginning of the section of E&M. Anesthesia guidelines are right before the section of anesthesia and so on and so forth, okay? ICD-10, your rules and guidelines are all in the front of the book. And then you have lots of anatomy illustrations, but this is where we're going to get into the index. Now in the CPT, your index is in the back. In your ICD-10, it's in the front. So you can see that I have actually put tabs on my alphabet because if I'm looking up common cold, I just want to open the C and it's going to be right there. You don't have to do that, but that's what these little tabs are for me. They're alphabetizing my index so I can just pull it. So just like when you're looking up all other codes, you're going to get your scenario. So if you were going to look up cold, you would go to C, right? So I'm gonna remind you, in this book are only diagnoses. ICD-10, ICD CM, which is what we have, International Classification of Diseases, 10th Revision Clinical Modification. That's what ICD-10 stands for, CM stands for. CPT, Current Procedural, terminology, procedures, diagnostic CPT procedures, okay? So what we're gonna be looking up is not what the doctor did in diagnoses. We're gonna be looking up, why did he do that? Why did Mr. Jones have to have the heart cath? Well, because he was having palpitations. Make sense? What did we do, heart cath? Why? Palpitations. So palpitations you would find in this book because that is the diagnosis. Okay, so we're going to actually, sometimes I think the best way to learn how to do this, here comes Latasha. Sometimes I think the best way to learn is just to dive straight in. So what do you think we're going to do now? Hi, Latasha. Hi. Hey, um, I was just stopping in to let you know that I won't be able to join your Zoom class because I'm at my doctor appointment. Okay. So I just wanted to let you know that. All right. Well, I'm recording, Latasha, and then I'll, I'll put this in a specific spot and let you guys know where you can go to watch it, okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. So now I'm gonna share my screen and what would a day in Zoom class be without a Google slideshow? I wanted to write on the whiteboard, but I didn't have enough room. My whiteboards are small in here. So I'm gonna share my screen. Move up. Okay. 
So we're doing ICD-10. So what we're gonna look up in bold at the top, it says urinary frequency. So what would we look up? I always start with the anatomical site or the body part. So urinary. So in your, uh, in your index, which is in the front of your book, look up urinary or urine. So I'm gonna give you a moment to get to your use in your index. Once you get to urine, because urinary isn't there, it's gonna actually be urine. You're gonna look down, you're gonna read down under urine until you see the word frequency. When you see urine frequency, please unmute yourself and say, I see it. I see it. I see you. I see it. Okay, I don't. I had to come back to y'all because I can't tell how many people saw it and how many didn't. Does everybody see it? I see it. Alexis, do you see it? Yes, Joy. Now you have one step. Okay, all right. Let's hang on. Oh, so this is <clears throat> See it? Okay. So it called for urinary frequency, but urinary is not here. It's under urine, right? So sometimes you have to think a little bit critically when you're looking at these diagnoses. So if you looked for urinary and you didn't see it, but your eye caught urine, you should automatically say, let me see if it's there. Okay. Do we stop here? No, because we always code two ways. We find it in our index. Then we go to our tabular, which is our big portion back here. And we're going to look under the R's. So let's go to R350. And it's orange, see? my orange, the R's are orange. Yeah, I see it. Okay, when you get to R350 and you see it, give me a thumbs up because I wanna point something out to you. What page is it on, um, Antoinette? One thousand two hundred and twenty-seven. Miss Rhonda, one thousand two hundred and twenty-seven. You got it. Okay, this is why I want to stop and want you to look at something. Okay, so you have your finger on R three five point zero. Look above that where you see R35. Do you see that red dot? That is a stop sign. That red dot tells you, you cannot just put down diagnosis code R350. It is not an accurate code and they need more explanation. So when you see the R35.0, the R35.1 or the R35.8. Miss Rhonda, can you mute me, please? I mean, Miss Roblin. Oh. 
Could you mute, mute me, please? I don't know why I get feedback from her. So polyurea is not specific enough to use as a major code. It can't be used by itself. It has to have more explanation. So when you look at R35.0, frequency of mictrition, which is frequency of urine, I would have never known that, y'all. I'm just telling you. <laughs> you know, I would have never. <laughs> so don't let me sound like, oh, I just knew what that meant. <laughs> um, they're looking for that specification. They need that 0 0.0 to specify. If you look at 35.1, nocturia, that's urinary frequency only at night. So if you had urinary frequency only at night, what would you use? You would then use R35.1. How are you gonna know that? Remember documentation? It's going to be documented. Nothing's going to happen if you just do uh, urinary frequency and leave it there. But if they give you more specification on your medical record, then it's okay to specify. The higher the number, the more money it is to get paid for it. So if you can use a higher number with medical necessity and that you have your documentation, then you're okay. If it's not documented, it didn't happen. So if it's not documented, don't code that. Only code what you have. Okay, so I'm going to flip our screen back around again. Okay, so we got, oops, sorry. Come on. So we have our urinary frequency. Our next one is going to be painful respiration. Okay, so if you have something that's pain or painful, just make a note of it. You're going to go to pain. I, would, I went to respiration yesterday and I thought, I've been doing this for how many years and why did I do that? It's go to pain or painful. So you're gonna go to your index, which is in the front of your book, under P. And you're gonna go to pain. And you're going to see a ton of reason to have pain, but we're simply going to go to the R's underneath pain and we're going to look for respiration. I found it. Alexis, did, was that a thumb up? Okay. Sronda, you see it? Okay, so do we stop here? Sonia, tell me why we don't stop here. Because we need to look it up. <laughs> we always code two ways. Two ways. Two ways. If you Google it, you better go look in your manual because coding two ways makes you more accurate. Alexis, have you found it, hon? Not yet. I'm just confused okay. on how y'all getting it too quick. It's okay. Don't worry about that. This is mm -hmm. not a racing contest. This is just us doing little bits of coding together. There, there's no worries. 375. Three. 375 in the front. Um, in the index, in the front. Index. Because we go to the index first and we look up our term. We find the word pain, it's in red, and then we follow down until we find respiration. Is that 375? Yeah. It's in that, on page, well, 375 for you. Is it in the first column, Antoinette? It, that's where yes. mine is. Yes, ma'am. It's in the first column. It's like it's the, maybe 15 or 10 down in the first I column. I see it. You see okay. it now? 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't get frustrated, Alexis. I'm going to tell you, sometimes this is the first time we're opening this book. By the time you're done, this is what you're going to be doing. You're going to be, you're all over the place just like this. So just, just don't worry. Okay. okay. So now we need to go to our tabular and we need to look at code R071. So let's turn back. I know. <laughs> it's a lot of turning back and forth, huh, guys? If you want to share the, uh, the page number, Antoinette, you can. It's page 1,222. Okay, let me know when y'all see it. Okay, so R07.1 says chest pain on breathing. But if you look right underneath that, those words, it says painful respiration. Okay, I want, us, I want you to look at R07 right above it. What does it have in front of it? That stop sign, right? Can we use R07 alone? No, because that red dot says stop. I need more information, go below to be more specific. Make sense? Okay, we're gonna see. Cause guess what y'all get to do? You're gonna ready, set, code. Atrial tachycardia. Go to your index, decide which word you're gonna look up and find me the code. Y'all can talk some amongst each other if you want. I found it. So if you went to tachycardia first, that's where you need to go. And then you're gonna scroll down. It's just like one down, you're gonna find atrial. Once you find your code, I want you to check it in your tabular and make sure you have the right code. have to look at y'all want to see y'all if you need me to go back to the word I will okay while y'all are looking I'm just going to ask you a question who knows what tachy tachycardia means who knows what bradycardia means I'm fixing to give you one of those funny things you'll always remember I was taught this I worked on the cardiac floor at Rapids Regional Brady women are slow, like the Brady Bunch women are slow. Tacky women are fast. Bradycardia means slow heartbeat. Tachycardia means fast heartbeat. I remember silly things like that very easily. So if I have something like that to share, I will. Did y'all find it in the index? Alexis, you feel good or we need to talk about it? It's kind of coming to me. Okay. 
don't don't worry this is just i'm just showing y'all just very basic cpt coding the processes are exactly the same just different codes yes, so learning this process is going to just help y'all get better at cpt coding too miss rhonda how you doing So we're going to check your code. Who got that answer? Oh, I'll go back and let you who got I 47.1. I did. Miss Rhonda, did you get I 47.1? No. Okay. I can't hear you, honey. It's on page 448. 448? Yes, ma'am. I got page 899. Oh. Oh, no. The um, In the front, in the index, it's page 448. Oh, okay. 898 is the description, like the description almost. Come on, Sonia, don't be getting us confused over here. <laughs> well, I went and found it in the back to make sure. Yeah, yeah I did too. That's okay, yeah, right. got it. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we're good. All right. I'm going to go back. Y'all ready? Lisping. Well, that's not going to be hard because there's only one word to look up. Lisping. So we're going to go to our L's and we're going to look up the code for lisping. So in the front of your book, in your index, look for lisping. Antoinette or Sonia or somebody, can we give up the, uh, the page number in the index where you can find lisping? Three thirty-six. So on 336, you're going to find lisping. Once you find lisping in your index, double check that code in your tabular. 797 in the tabular. Got it. How did we do, ladies? Did everybody get it? Got it. Ah, here's a real good one for you. Now we're going to go back to our index and look up the word constipation. Page 168. Gives us some different um, choices there, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So we kind of have to, well, in a medical record, they're going to give us more information, right? So what are our choices? Our choices are spastic, chronic, idiopathic, drug-induced, functional, dysfunction, 
psychogenic, slow transit, or specified NEC. That NEC stands for not otherwise classified. Oh, come on, leave us alone. We're going with spastic in this particular instance. I know I'm kind of rushing us through this, but I'm running out of time on our Zoom, on our, um, Zoom class thing, and I want to get to this next part to show you. So now once we put it all together, this is kind of what you would see from a doctor, uh, from a doctor's note or a medical record. Mr. Jones, an established patient, came into the office today complaining with constipation, painful rest, uh, respiration, and suffers with atrial tachy. Now, we've already coded all of those, so you don't have to put the codes in, but I wanted you to see how that tied into those medical reports or those things that, that you're seeing with we, that they want the CPT code and the ICD-10 code. They want what you did and why you did it. Does that make sense? Did that help anybody? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I know we need more practice. I know there are questions. There's no way we can cover it in a 30 minute Zoom class one time. Okay? But I've given you a basis to start with. If you want, maybe I can throw in every now and then, I'll just throw out a, a bonus question uh, and have you look up an ICD-10 code. Or you can look in the one in the um, stuff that you're going to be coding for CPT, and if there's an ICD uh, uh, a diagnosis there, you can just highlight it or write it down and go look it up. And then if you don't know if that's the right answer, call me and we'll look at it together. That's the fun part of coding is having other coders to say, "This is what I got. What'd you get? Oh well, I got this. Why'd you get this? Because it says this, 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 and this. Well, I got that because I thought and I see this, 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 and this. So we get to collaborate." with those things and come up with the most accurate code. So do we have any questions? Okay, I'm gonna ask Alexa something real quick. Alexis, are you understanding um, how your books work and how you need to do your work? I'm understanding this part what we just did, but the, um... When I asked you about the uh, question, where what the chapters that which okay. book it was? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm gonna tell you. Can you see Antoinette? Antoinette, wave. Antoinette is in your study group. Antoinette, Alexis, Alexis, Antoinette. Um, you have each other's numbers. The reason I'm asking you to reach out to each other is not because I don't want to help you. I am here for you 100%. You can ask the other ladies, uh, and you know I'm gonna be texting and calling, and you can call me but I can't always see things the way that you guys see them because I'm on an instructor side and not on a student side. So you may, may be seeing something different than I can see. That's why I like for you guys to talk to each other because that way it helps you understand what you're seeing. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? So um, Antoinette, you have your, um, or y'all have your emails where you have your numbers listed that I sent out? Um, Yes, ma'am. Yeah, Alexis is in your study group. So if can y'all collaborate today or get together or talk? Do you feel okay about that, Alexis? Yeah, that's fine. I just hate to bug somebody because I overthink and don't get it. Well, listen, mm -hmm. welcome to the overthinking <laughs> club. That's what mm -hmm. makes us great medical coders and billers and to be in this, you're in the right company. Please do not feel like you're bugging anybody. We are a team. That is how we're running this ship and that's how everybody's going to be successful because we're a team. We don't want you to feel overwhelmed or left behind in any way or like you're bugging. You're not bugging anybody. The only way you can know is to ask the question and I'm going to tell you guys something if I haven't told you. I love mistakes. Let me tell you why. Do you learn when you get everything right? You learn nothing. You learn when you make mistakes. You learn when you ask questions. There are no stupid questions. I mean, sometimes I might go, oh, I can't believe they just asked that, but there's no stupid questions. Please don't feel that way. Ask questions, call me, call your classmates. We're here to support each other. 
go team. <laughs> I feel like a cheerleader. <laughs> All right, any questions, anything I can do before we have to get off? We have like four minutes. Did y'all enjoy class? Did you learn something? I did. I really did. That's awesome. That's what we're here for to learn. And guys, this is only the beginning. I am so excited to get into e and Y'all are going to have to say quit doing Zooms because e and is so fun and it's the basis on which our CPT knowledge will start. And if we get e and solid, nothing else is going to give us trouble. <laughs> I love e and It's fun. All right. Okay. Have a good day. Reach out to me. If you need anything, 